Hello, and welcome to the lecture on American urbanization or the growth of cities in the United States during the Gilded Age. And we're going to start with this graph showing human population in time and this big boom that's going on there that's very much uh, explaining why cities grew so rapidly during this time. Now, what's happening throughout much of humans' history is that babies don't live, and families would have many children, but finding only that one, two, three of their children are surviving. But here, uh, sort of in the 19th century, with improvements in medicine and healthcare and sanitation and our understandings of things and why we get sick and uh, better agriculture, especially wheat and corn, uh, opening up in the American Midwest, and we just have a lot more food. And so we get a population boom because now the children are living. And so families would continue the old model. You have five, six, seven children, and now all of them are living. And so we get rapid population growth. Now where we stand in the 21st century today is this uh, population growth will start to even out as worldwide the trend is for most families to have one, two, three children and, uh, and all of them living, which is a good thing. And so our main idea here is that in the late 19th century, with this pro rapid population growth, American society was increasingly dominated by large urban centers. This urban growth was accompanied by often disturbing changes, including the new immigrants that are crowding into these slums. We get new religious outflow. Uh, and conflicts over culture and values. And Ameri many Americans were disturbed by these new urban problems. Cities also offered opportunities to women and expanded cultural horizons. And these problems will be addressed in time, just not really so much yet in the Gilded Age. And this new urban, it's a new ur urban area as Americans um, saw unprecedented population growth and urbanization and then suburbanization. And these cities were growing up, and they could because of the new technology, steel and elevators in particular. And these cities were very exciting places for those not living in them, and they're very attractive to people in search of work and the, or excitement, and they were luring lots of people off of the farms in looking for these opportunities and these excitements. And this graph showing the percentage of Americans living in what would be described as being an urban center. What do they look like? Well, these are some pictures from New York City around the turn of the century. The main train station, Penn Station. You can see the uh, starting to grow up, but certainly not the skyline of New York City today. And this is Brooklyn B Bridge, which really epitomized um, the uh, the cities and these new growth that we have in them and the construction of the city or of the bridge. Now the problems. Now there's six problems that were readily apparent in these cities. Housing, transportation, water, sanitation, crime, and fire. For housing, a proposed solution but became a bit of a problem was the tenement house. And this design won a competition for a design that would have airflow in every room in the building. And the proposal uh, is to have these air shafts. You can see right here, these air shafts. And we look at it from straight up above. Um, yeah, every room has access, has a window to the outside. But the problem is that these air shafts uh, became the solution not to, uh, to a different problem of what do I do with all my garbage as people just flung their garbage into these air shafts and they became these festering holes of uh, really rank air and rats and cockroaches and so those windows became tightly shut and not really the best of solutions. Now transportation we can see here this mess of horses and wagons and you can see here we've got a little bit of a trolley line as well and there's no sort of rules on the roads nobody really thought about that and so it was uh, very chaotic on them now these trolleys that got created and this is an electric trolley and so yeah you can uh, move around a lot easily on these trolleys and it was also a means for the more well-to-do to get out of these cities and into uh, this new idea of getting, you know, outside to the suburb. And so out in the suburbs, you tend to have a little bit more of the middle class or the upper middle class living out there. Sanitation. Uh, there's no organized garbage system. There's no organized uh, anything to sort of deal with things like dead animals on the streets 
and th this would often be done uh, sort of privately or through just I'll, I'll do it kind of thing but there's no garbage truck coming along to pick up uh, the refuse and fire uh, many cities underwent major fires that destroyed much or all of the city and a couple of famous ones is Chicago in the 1870s and that's what this was a photo of here or here's another one and the San Francisco uh, earthquake and then the fire that came after it and there's no organized fire department there's no fire codes you know rules in buildings of making sure that uh, fires don't get started and there's just a lot more fire around with your lighting or for cooking or for heat and so the possibility of a fire spreading and becoming a, a major fire which is much more likely during this time so governments have not yet really caught up to uh, to fire safety and to fire departments and water supplies all right the new immigrants that were pouring into these cities and the it's what we do call the new immigrants with the old immigrants being the germans and the irish and a few chinese coming in which were uh, legally banned in 1882 with the Chinese Exclusion Act, uh, they, for the most part, adjusted well, especially the Germans. And by 1880, and really being accepted as Americans, and you wouldn't really know, you know, you'd meet a person, but you wouldn't uh, necessarily know that his ancestry was German, for example. With these new immigrants that are coming in from Southern and Eastern Europe, they're much less welcomed and they're not fitting in and uh, assimilating to the extent that the German and the Irish did. And they tended to be uh, very unskilled, illiterate, non-Protestant, they tend to be Catholics, and would sort of sell into their own communities. And we can see with this graph some of the, uh, uh, the waves of immigration that would be coming in. And this wave, we can see there's a couple here, coming in and then another one a, a really big one after 1900 and another comparing the two now coming over for these immigrants it's a very difficult journey to get over and once you got over for many the first sight that they saw was the Statue of Liberty and then they would be brought to Ellis Island in New York City's harbor and 17 million immigrants processed at Ellis Island and if you're coming over f uh, on the other side, often in San Francisco and El Angel Island, and you would undergo an exam and they might do some tests on you and check your documents, but for the most part, you know, they're, they're not turning back a lot of people at all. The tests were very uh, not challenging. There's a health test. And here you can see this is the, the, the test. You gotta match one, two, three, four with A, B, C, D, and it's not challenging at all and uh, you can see it's one to a and two to b and three to c and four to d and that's it and so um maybe the the, the most retarded of all people are being sent back but for the most part everybody's coming in and this is showing a map of new york city and the ethnic enclaves and you wanted to be among your own where people who can speak your language and can maybe there's a few that have been around a little bit longer and can help you out or the food that you know and welcome would be there and so you get little Greek town and little Italy and and German town as uh, yeah you get all these different sort of ethnic enclaves but then because you're surrounded by people of your own culture there's much less incentive to assimilate into the broader American culture, at least for those who come over. Now for their children, it's a different story, but for you, know, for you yeah, you'll be surrounded by your own kind and you like it. And this is sort of showing Little Italy, Mulberry Street. And you can see another one here. Now what's pushing people out of Europe, there's a very strong push because of that rapid population growth. There really just was a shortage of land and they're escaping often um, autocratic regimes where you're, there's military conscription or there's religious persecution, especially Jews and uh, in Russia in particular in the uh, late uh, 1800s. And what's pulling a lot to America, now a lot of the, um, a lot of the immigrants 
who are on the move in Europe settle in Europe, and they don't all come to the United States. But what does pull many of them to the United States is opportunity and the opportunity of a better life. And don't, not all of them stayed. Often they might come for a few years, earn some good American dollars, and then return back to, the, uh, to their uh, homeland. And we call these ones the birds of passage. Now the reaction, both positive and negative reaction to these immigrants. Um, the government, of course, is very slow to deal with this rapid urbanization and these immigration, and there's really nothing coming from the federal governments. And for state governments, they tend to be uh, dominated by the rural power. So it became the city governments, which are notoriously corrupt, the political machines, and they took over the role of, of providing services in return for, yeah, you vote for me, and that's how these political parties work. Uh, we'll give you this in return, you know, guarantee uh, the vote. And social reformers are really taking uh, notice of them. And for social reformers, they're very much uh, influenced by what's known as the social gospel, that you do good for the sake of doing good. And especially, and we see it with previous reform movements, uh, the middle class women often taking the lead. And for this time period, the most prominent is Jane Addams. And they were setting up what are known as settlement houses to help settle these people. And these were places where you can get help and you can get services that you might need. Or you can just get sort of some entertainment or a, a place to be. And for women trying to escape abusive homes, these became a refuge for them. So these are, these are places doing a lot of good uh, for immigrants, for poor, and for women. And this is Jane Addams' settlement house, uh, known as Hull House in Chicago. And a photograph of uh, some of the activities that might be going on here. Now, on the flip side, we have the anti-reaction and, uh, you know, a renewed nativism, which is, you know, America for Americans. And uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of dislike of these immigrants coming in. For the, for the first, uh, first and foremost, they're Catholic, and America is a country that was sort of born on anti-Catholicism and, and a distrust of the Pope and of uh, the Catholic Church. There's a the fear, oh, they're just going to breed a lot, and they're going to have a lot of children, and uh, they're going to infect America. Um, they're going to be corrupt. They're going to take our jobs. They're, uh, they have dangerous ideas like communism as well uh, was in there. Um, and so some organizations formed to... to uh, prevent immigration from coming in. Organized labor was opposed to them because of the uh, they're, they're unskilled and that you know they're going to take our jobs. And Congress did enact some anti-immigrant measures. We've already mentioned the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. Um, no immigrants could come in. The had a labor contract. 1917, a literacy test was uh, put in, and they'll have an agreement with Japan, known as the the Gentlemen's Agreement which sort of said that the Japanese government would agree not to send any over. In return, uh, those Japanese already in America would be treated uh, more fairly. And this is a continuity in the United States, this uh, anti-immigrant stance. And we see it a number of times in different forms. So if you wish to read the cartoon, you can, uh, you can pause. You can see the last one. We should erect a wall here, yeah, very much seeing that attitude in the United States today. And for many of the people who are opposed to the immigrants, they, of course, are coming from immigrants themselves, but uh, you know, not, not this time. Okay, we're gonna pause right there. Thank you very much.